Have you have you seen this post from this guy is uh, Grant B nine one one. He is one of the founders of Breaking Nine One One, and he tweeted, "My daughter just started second grade at Metro Schools. I will be pulling her out immediately." Her first English lesson of the year is teaching her that white people are bad, mean, and racist against African Americans and Mexicans. My daughter is seven, is not racist, nor is her family. This stuff is is has has become so pervasive across the board that I feel like you know the position I'm in right now is the only thing that stops this, and I don't even know if it will, is a straight Republican supermajority victory to just push this insanity out. This is what happens when. The only thing you're allowed to say is this. Like, you can't... Th- th- think about what 4chan did with that campaign. You ever see that campaign, It's Okay to Be White? Yeah. The goal of that was to point out that the establishment, our mainstream society, is so insane that you can't even say it's okay to be white. No, they call it white supremacy. Straight up. There, there, there's, a, there's a funny photo of... Uh, it's like three Hispanic dudes, a white guy and a black guy, and the far left posts the photo saying white supremacists. It's, this is, this is, our brains are broken. Like, not, not ours. Says the brains of society completely fractured at this point, as far as I can tell. I'm scared about the upcoming school season. I mean, you know. Yeah, take, take, we got pictures. Check this out. The white kids told the Mexican girl to go back to the Mexican school, it says. And they have these images. This is what they're teaching kids in school. At least in this one school. I mean, this is, this is, this is. This is really crazy stuff, man. I mean, look at these photos they're showing kids. It's like a bunch of, uh, why are they showing kids this? You know, I grew up on the south side of Chicago. I grew up in a classroom full of uh, Hispanic people from different backgrounds. Same, South Norwalk. I grew up with people, some black people, because it's south side of Chicago. uh, Kids, I shouldn't say people, just a bunch of kids. All different types. Filipino kid, kid from Poland, uh, black kid, Mexican kid, one kid spoke Spanish. One kid spoke Polish. Didn't mean anything. And guess what? When we were growing up, we were like, racism is bad because you're, you're like, these are my friends. Now they're just, you know, jamming this into the face of kids. And it's like cult zealotry. It's just some of the weirdest stuff I've ever seen. But you've, you've got, I don't know how much, how personal you want to get. Yeah, sure. What are your, what are your thoughts on this? Because I think this affects you personally. I mean, I'm scared for, you know, my daughter to have to just physically wear a mask all day to me is torturous. Like I feel so much empathy for people who have to do that and have to go to jobs and wear that all day. That, that just seems insane. But then to the, what the creepy part that we talked about is that the whole class is going to be live streamed. Like they're in class, they're in class, but the kids who are remote are, are who are not coming to school can still participate. So there's like, there's definitely cameras on all day, and they're all on their... Where's it streaming to? Zoom. So anybody... And it's, and so it's you, being you, recorded, probably. So you can Zoom bomb it. I don't know what the deal is with how you just, locked down you it just, is, but... Yeah, I don't know. I know that there was... that we, were talk, we mentioned the Patreon court case earlier. Somebody accidentally had their microphone on, and so the judge is like, who is that? Turn that off. I got to kick somebody out of the room. Like, how crazy is that? I mean, I get it. You can walk into a courtroom and start screaming and they'll throw you out. Mm-hmm. But you could have these kids in these Zoom classes and all of a sudden some crazy random stranger jumps in and starts posting like horrifying things and the kids are going to see it. Yeah, that happened. It there did, was it did little, happen? Yeah, there's a little Jewish family, I think, that had their little homeschooling pod and somebody got in and started wow. bombing anti-Semitic stuff at the them. The scarier awful. thing to me, though, is the idea that you can't really have troublemakers in class and that, you know, the troublemakers are going to be on camera. That That's just not how it's supposed to be. Kids are supposed to be a little rambunctious. Yeah. Learn what it's like in the they real world. They have no idea. They don't even know what it means to be streaming. Did you see the... Uh, there was this viral thread from a teacher saying, I'm worried about parents finding out now what we're teaching their kids. I didn't see. That's, that's the scariest thing. And he like locked his account afterwards. He did. It was a full thread of this guy being like, I'm worried about the conservatives. They start, they'll start seeing what we're teaching their children. I'm also worried about the liberals too. And it's like, these, these teachers know full well they're indoctrinating children with zealous fanaticism. And they're scared people are going to find out now because of COVID. I think, man, it's time to get out of the city. It's time to pull your kids out. Homeschooling is intense. It's a what lot is, of you, energy. But I, I do, you know, I'm very open to it. 
I, I, I think that if you look at how rapidly kids learn, I mean, th- there's, there's a ton of value to, to be going to school yeah, for social reasons, but you know, when they all have to stand in a little bubble being for, apparently they're going to force the kids to play games in little bubbles oh outside at the local school. In bubbles? And they, so like, there's no recess. There's no just going out and playing on the playground. That's not allowed. The playgrounds are off limits, but they're going to put them outside into these little circles and they have to play like a board game outside what? and not wear a mask. This is the, cr- this is some of the craziest stuff. You know, I remember when, when I was little, not when I was little, but when I was like younger as a teenager, I always thought, you know, times change. And you don't want to be that person who gets stuck in the past. You know, older people become conservative and they talk about how things used to be so much better. And I always thought like, you know what? Times change. But this is some kind of ridiculous psychosis. You know, it's one thing I'm growing up and it's like, by the way, you know, gay people can get married now. And I'm like, this affects me in no way. I don't care. Now it's literally like you can't go to the movies, you can't go to a bar. What's that? You went to a park and you weren't wearing a mask. You're under arrest. We're going to kick your door and we're going to shut your business down. Now the kids are going to be in bubbles, out, whatever, I don't know. Circles. It's like oh, a I painted circle on the yeah. ground. But I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if, if there were bubbles. I yeah. mean, they're putting, up, they're putting up plexi between the desks and Jeez. they have to wear masks. This is insane. Yeah. For, for, for what? Look, I understand there's, there, there's, there's COVID, but I mean, you look at the metrics, it does not justify what everyone is doing uh and sweden didn't lock down and no. they they had some problems and now things are kind of slowing down it really does look like early on we had a problem and we did the 15 days slow the spread we certainly did now we got a bunch of cases and nobody's going to the hospital you, you it, it's just it's hysteria it's hysteria driven by we, we are locked in this culture where the left is at the wheel and nothing can check them so they're just spinning the wheel as crazy as possible. And the left thinks Trump's driving, but he's not. And the switch from COVID to protests slash riots with, with no question. To me, that was there was so much dissonance in my head. I was, I was bugging out for like a few days, just nobody else seeming to, to care. And I thought, I mean, I saw you made some posts and you were just like, I, it's, it's over. I, I don't care anymore. Oh, I'm done. Yeah. No, it's straight up done. <laughs> the moment the riots, the protests, I'm like, you cannot make me care anymore. No, no, I can care about the authoritarian lockdowns. Sorry, man. Look, we, 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 we are taking precautions here. You know, Bill came down. We've got sanitizer. We're, you know, we're distanced and all that stuff. And we're being careful just because I think it's responsible. I don't want to, I'm not going to be one of these. I, I, the, you see these stories of these guys who are yeah. like, it's all fake. I, you know, and then they get sick and they die. I'm like, no, 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 no. Look. I recognize there's, you know, we've got something, but at this point, I think we've probably, we've probably developed herd immunity or something. Why are we at 152 days of lockdown? Because we can't talk about it. I run the risk of being banned for simply saying this. I'm not even kidding. Yeah. You had, you had, you had, the, you, you saw those doctors get, get, uh, Facebook banned those doctors for holding a, pre- it, they, I'm sorry, they banned Breitbart for filming doctors hosting a press uh, putting on a press conference hosted by a republican yeah newsguard changed their status negative yeah they they, they put they, it into uh they, like uh they were considering it again right like right, right. they've removed because their green check and they're like oh we're not sure about breitbart anymore so if i if i film a press conference i could get i could get shut down so That's, i mean i feel like you've already sort of taken the stance that you're going to within reason talk about what you want to talk about despite it being controversial and it seems like I, I honestly think that based on your intention, which is pretty clear, that you're just trying to get information out, you're having an honest take on on what's going on, that you just have to hope that the tech overlords are going to yeah. just get it. That, you know, coming coming at it from a good place and you have to be able to talk about these things. So with, with YouTube, I have a direct contact. Right. And when my videos get demonetized, I basically send them in and I would say... 99% of my videos, about 95% are monetized. Like this, there's been big changes over the past few years. It's been fantastic. They've, they've uh, just recently in the past few months, I've been finally granted on my second channel, Timcast News. Uh, I've been granted what's called self-certification, which means now almost every video I do is getting monetized. However, this is what's really messed up about the, about the whole system. I have like, I don't know what, 1,500 videos on one channel. And 29 of them 
are incorrectly certified. So here's how it works. I upload a video. It says, do any of these things appear in your video? I put no. I don't swear. I don't show graphic images. Well, someone, for some reason, thought that me criticizing Black Lives Matter was hate speech. So they flag it. Now I have 29 out of 1,500. So now YouTube's put me in this thing where they have to do a pending ad. Like they, they put you in a, in a, in a 20-minute holding pattern hmm. every time you upload. So that's actually been very detrimental. So then whenever I get one of these false flags, I got to send a huge list to Google like all of these are wrong. Like there's no hate speech in any of my content and they can't do all of them because it's a combination of an automated system and then certain people get access to, you know, uh, Google employees who will do an override and they still can't do every single one. Well, minds.com slash Timcast is fully monetized. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Uh, well, we, well, we've got uh, TimCast.net coming Tim, up. TimCast.net. That's going to be that's going to be the way to do it. So, uh, for those that aren't familiar, TimCast.net used to redirect to my main YouTube channel. Now it's set up to redirect to essentially a, like I don't know how do you do, I don't want to describe it. It's a, it's a it's a site powered by Minds. Right. So it's basically we've talked about this before that we're going to be setting up a standalone website for the podcast for my other shows. That you can go, you can become a member, get exclusive content, all that stuff, and it's being built through like the Minds Pro backend, I guess. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't, I, I don't want to speak too much as to how it works, but people who are signed up can use Minds or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you can log in Timcast.net with your Minds creds. Honestly, anyone out there who wants to monetize, like Minds is open for monetization. If so you're, you, have, you have like ads now running and everything? No, not ads yet, but we're we're, we're essentially sharing our revenue yeah. with the pro creators who help us drive traffic. So we oh, can't we're... have advertisers come to us and say, you know, you have to right. monetize this content because we're sharing our subscription revenue, Minds Plus and Minds Pro, with the creators who are helping drive traffic and we're giving competitive RPMs. So, you know, check out minds.com slash pro if you're interested. And yeah, man, I the, mean. The, the general idea for what I'm trying to do is creating something that's standalone. So if, you know, they ban me, they ban any of my channels, well, I'll still have TimCast.net. I'll still exist in some form and not just simply get wiped out. And so, you know, mine's being a much better, safer system, in my opinion, for, you know, for speech. That's what's being built on. And then you, you guys have added like YouTube sync and stuff. Yep. And we, we also have a peer-to-peer advertising system, which I honestly think is sort of the future of where brand-to-brand advertising is going, where actually people right now can send you offers on minds of any amount of dollars or crypto and saying, Hey Tim, here's a thousand bucks, share my post to your followers. And he'll get a notification that says, Hey, do you want to accept this offer or reject it? So it's direct between brands as opposed to having to go through us for advertising. So, you know, if someone gets demonetized on YouTube, like guess what? There's for everybody who gets demonetized on YouTube, there are thousands of brands who probably would send them a direct offer and then they could run the content. Yeah. And there do- YouTube doesn't need to be getting involved. Right. It's like I mean I can put ads in my videos which No, you know, yeah, yeah, that, that you're right, that works too. But yeah. it, but, but if there was a system that it was automated for people to send you offers on and YouTube, that would be sweet. The big brands have that. Right. On on YouTube if you oh. you know I'm not going to name any of the big companies, but the yeah. big companies apparently have direct access mm-hmm. to the ads that run on their platform. It's ridiculous. You know they should have opened it up a long time ago, but that would have avoided the apocalypse problem, I guess. I think a lot of these big companies really are scared that if they do nothing, the platform goes insane. You get extremists across the board and just weird content of yeah. like, you know, Hitler dancing with the Incredible Hulk like mm-hmm. we've seen. And if they try to do something, then they're invariably going to be favoring some political ideology based on them, their own views or there's no real way to, other it than just a, let it let it go. It's... Such a complex problem, man. I was just listening to a, a podcast with Sam Harris and this New York Times reporter who reports on child, I don't even want trafficking to say or trafficking. Yeah. Yes. And um, basically, you know, acknowledging that you need encrypted solutions, but that basically like some uh, ridiculous, like over 40% of all child trafficking reports come from Facebook Messenger. Really? Yeah. Wow. Wow. And so they're scared that 
if you encrypt everything, then there's going to be no access to those people. Yeah. But obviously, you need to encrypt everything because if you compromise encryption, it makes everybody less safe. So it's yep. like, how do you actually deal with this? And but the, but the answer is not create a backdoor. Right. The answer is not censor everything that has this word in it. It has to be a, a more nuanced solution, and we just have to have a more open conversation about it. And I, like, the, the 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 platforms are so powerful that they 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 can step up mm. and make the decisions. I mean. I was just on a call, a, a live stream with a bunch of like the president of the ACLU, um, really? couple, a couple high level people from oh, the they've ACLU. Lost it. They've lost it in the social, in the sense of their social media, but they do still, from what they were saying, uphold these values. And, the, and they, they, we were actually, there were some de-radicals, former radicals on the call, former uh, jihadi recruiter was on the call who works with Daryl Davis. Wow, and he basically started this this group, Parallel Networks, which is a deradicalization group that goes on social networks and tries to help help bring people back from the from the edge. But you know, they were agreeing with it, and so I, I do think that the the smartest people in the world know. And I'm not saying these are the smartest people in the world. I'm saying, but all the cybersecurity encryption encryption experts know that you have to encrypt everything yeah and all of the de-radicalization experts know that you can't ban everybody and so they're beholden to the mob that's it that every everybody knows you can't do this but everybody the mob if in, the, in like you're saying the mob doesn't even actually want de-radicalization because if you look at the data and you actually want to minimize even if you wanted to minimize hate speech banning makes more hate speech so, right. And they don't get that. But they, yeah, they don't get that. They're like, look, we banned this person. They've gone away forever. Have you changed anything? No. No. The number of people who have called for bannings have never changed anybody's mind. They've been banned. That's what's funny. It's like, you know, uh, there was a comic that got banned recently. And it was this, it was a black woman wearing a, a mask. And her shirt said, I can't breathe. And the white woman, white woman looks over and said something like, you know, well, then take the mask off. And that was the comic. I got a chuckle out of it. It got censored, I think, from Instagram or somewhere for being, not, not from Instagram, uh, from some company or something, for being, oh, from a newspaper, that's what it was. It was offensive. And they started complaining about it, and I'm like, welcome to the party. You want offensive content removed, now you get removed. This, it, it affects them, this, you know, and, and they don't learn. But I look at these big tech companies. Yeah, you're right. They know all these things. I don't believe the ACLU actually has civil liberties at heart. They oppose civil liberties. So how, how can I trust them to, I'll give you an example. They've supported discrimination against minorities at universities. Straight up, no questions asked, not hyperbole, not an exaggeration. They say it is okay for universities to discriminate against someone based on their race. That's not civil liberties. So how can I trust them to actually have, to do the right thing when, sure, they can be on the phone and they can say things like, oh yeah, 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 we, we know, we're going to do the right thing. And then they turn around and they spit on the constitution or they, they spit on civil rights. They do still represent some extreme racists in certain cases, but it's a, you know by far the minimum of the legal work that they're doing. And it seems like their social media has become totally polarized. So you know when 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 you talk to the the, the ACLU and you you grill them about these issues, they they do still try to hold on but yeah no I, i'm I'm, no. I'm over it it's yeah. like it's like jack dorsey they whisper everything you want to yeah. hear into your ears and then do nothing and you look at you look at how they act on social media and the things they inflame the things they empower and it's insanity and it's and it's part of the ongoing problem we can't have honest conversations because of companies like the aclu because they won't stand up for free speech. they're the ones who we need to be standing up they won't they and turn their back on free speech they, they've straight up turned their back on it. And you can look at these organizations that are advocating for, I think the, the funniest thing, revelation or, or, you know, something, thing to happen was the freepress.net, the free press organization supporting censorship. Like they literally have multiple initiatives on censoring content. Like you're called free press, dude. That's how insane everyone has gotten. And I believe it's because Everyone feels like they're forced to say certain things because everyone around them, you know, it's the weirdest thing.
Yeah. Like it's, nobody it, really wants this, but everyone's scared. Everyone else wants it, I guess. If it, it feels like some sort of a thought virus, it, 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 it's so much fear. People are just terrified of, of social backlash. And, but the, I th honestly think that the, again, I'm a broken record, but ultimately the data is just going to destroy the arguments. I, 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 I want to believe that the data about censorship is just going to prove itself and people, and it's just like, no data, data. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think so. Like we, we, we've known these things for a long time. We fought for these rights. We fought for, uh, you know, to, to be able to speak freely, to be able to associate, to be able to communicate. Journalists used to be able to sit down with warlords. Now you do that and they call you a minion of the warlord. And so you can have all the data in the world. I can publish on Twitter all day and night. Like, look at these things. Doesn't matter. Because, yeah. you know, listen, you look at the science and the data around COVID, you'll get banned. Hmm. You, you, you post about FBI crime stats, you get banned. You can't talk about these things. Dude, other countries think we're nuts. They do, yeah. We, we just got like a quarter million users from Thailand who are freaking out about their government and censorship in their, from their government. Like we have more censorship from corporations yeah. in the U.S. than our government. Of course, every other country, it's like no, the government is saying you cannot criticize them. That's yeah. where we're at. We have a, the First Amendment, but these big companies have have taken over the commons, and whatever the left is today this is hilarious. Donald Trump talked about pardoning Edward Snowden, yep. and the ACLU tweeted out, "This is one thing we're we're we say yes to," and they got attacked relentlessly. How dare you defend the president? The orange man is bad. This should not be. It was. It got roasted on Twitter, saying, "No, he's a criminal." That's who they've attracted, you know. And and this is what 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 really bothers me about people: the things they do, the things they say, the things they chase. The ACLU should take a good long look in the mirror and look at the people they've attracted because they don't believe in in civil liberties. Like you know, you you can complain that there are people who follow me and comment, and they say naughty words. I believe in free speech. As long as they're not breaking the law and inciting to violence, well, I don't, I don't appreciate what they say, but I think they have a right to say it. ACLU is the opposite. They're, they're, they're the anti-civil liberties union at this point. Though I'm ranting about the ACLU. But, it's, you know? but it's funny, though, that you say they did acknowledge that. So I would, I would put them in sort of a part of the progressive realm that, like Greenwald and Snowden, even, who, and, and you know, the, those who they have values. They do have some standards. I agree with you that yeah, they've, they've gotten unhinged, but they did say they agree with that. They did. Because they had to, because they tweeted like a couple of years ago and the tweet still exists and people highlighted it laughing at them. And they said, no, no, we believe that. But look at what happened with Charlottesville. They came out and defended free speech of Charlottesville, got attacked and started bleeding subscribers and then apologized and said, oh, we're going to review our First Amendment, you know, approach from now on. Isn't that crazy? Imagine the money that the ACLU would get if they got the actual free speech community to start supporting them. Like yep. the, the free speech community on the Internet is not giving money to the ACLU. Right. And it's like the people listening to this right now, if the ACLU would stand up for free speech, they would get huge surge of subscriptions. But it's like anti-Trump hate unites the factions of the left man from progressive far lefts to moderate corporate dems to passive liberals whatever they all hate trump and that's the go-to yeah it's funny it's like there you, you, you sort of have to pick which crowd of monthly subscribers you want well yeah yeah or you just stay true to yourself and people will come and go and some people will complain well, it, and yeah. you get emails where they're like you've changed man we don't, we don't like the direction you're going. And I say, I can only do me. You know what? I do what I want to do. No one's going to tell me what I can do. You know, I'm, well, then reason, like, you know, if, if, you wanna, if they're going to ban me from social media, well, then so be it. I'm going to do my thing. But nobody's going to tell me what I have to do. I just do what I feel like doing, what makes me happy. And that's all I've ever done. Well, you, you are a principled person and you are just one person. So it might be a little more complicated for the ACLU. So I understand kind of where they're coming from but if they were principled at all they would just say you know what we just support all free speech and if you want to stop supporting us because we support everyone's free speech fine the fact that we support everyone's free speech means that more people will be along later to give us money i think that would be great it's the long game yeah exactly yep 
but everybody is what, what I, th I think if I was going to try and paint a picture of what was happening, it's that everybody is sitting, staring at each other, side eyed, panicked, like which one's going to be the one to get me. Dude, I am terrified by the fact that even just on this stream, it's just like watching what we say. You said the R word. I said the R word. And I, and I said sorry <laughs> I to you because I felt bad because you could potentially lose monetization on it. And it's just like, that is not where the focus needs to be. So, it's so stupid. Yeah. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. We do the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. If you want to catch the full show, tune in to this channel, subscribe, hit the like button, or check us out on iTunes and Spotify. And we will soon have this podcast up for free on all podcast platforms. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all in the next episode.